Okay. Um, Andra, I believe you took the notes, correct? The minutes, sorry. Um, so I'm not sure where we, where we are um, in terms of minute taking. Were we going by last name? I would offer to take notes since I've missed the last couple of meetings, but unfortunately I've sustained a carpal tunnel type of injury recently and I'd much rather not type. That seems fair. Sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, we were going alphabetically, but I think Jesse stepped in a little bit to help during the derecio day. And then <laughs> I, I would say I only did half. I, and I also would be very willing today, but I may have to leave early for a, a child care um, conflict that is unavoidable. So I, I, I guess I could do the first half like I did, <laughs> but I'd rather do a whole minutes like next time, if that's okay. Yes. So Duane, can I, can we start back at the top? Are you okay with that? Uh, what about yep, Steve? What's that? I think Steve did it before. Steve, did you do it already? Well, I was um, in a sling the last six weeks. My, my oh. right hand um, <laughs> out of the sling, but it's still not really functional yet. So my, <laughs> I'm restricted to left-handed finger hunting. Poking. Wayne, but, you um, don't have a choice. You've been I'm trying to figure out that. what sort of uh, excuse I or malady I have. But, uh, <laughs> no, nothing's, uh, nothing's coming yeah, forward. Wow, so. everyone's in such rough shape. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I will. Uh, it's rough will, staying home. Uh, give me, give me. Uh, I need to get a little organized, but I will get this uh, get going. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Dwayne. Yeah. Appreciate it. Um, okay, so everybody, take a look at the minutes from this, the fourth. Anybody have any comments? If not, does anybody want a motion to accept the minutes? Very, very minor correction. Uh, my, my student, Nava Setig, is writing an undergraduate thesis rather than a dissertation, which is what is noted at the end. OK, we can make that note. Got it. Anybody want a motion to accept the minutes? I move to accept the minutes. Thanks, Jesse. I'll second that. Stephanie, do you want to do the roll call or would you like me to do it? Um, I can do it. Um, so Selman, Aye. Rose, yep, Roof, yes, Dumont, yes, Breger, yes, Drocker, yes, Ravi Kumar, abstaining. Wonderful. Okay. 
Uh, just for uh, the minute taking, are we expecting the consultants at all today? No, they will not be attending. Yep. Okay. And also, I don't think Sarah will be joining us this evening. Sarah Durr. Okay, so uh, Mark her is absent, I presume, at least for the person. <laughs> yeah, she may show up, but I don't think so. Okay, and uh, Sarah Schwartz. 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 I just don't. I don't think yeah. Sarah is ever going to be attending. So. Yep. Okay. Duly noted. Um, is there still nobody in the public, Stephanie? Um, nope, no public. Okay, so we'll move on to staff updates. Um, I, I, I really don't have a lot um, since last time, really. It's been um, status quo of getting green communities reporting in and um, moving forward on working on the application for the solar Citing study for the brick grant so that's kind of going to be the big next push because um, that's due december 11th but um I, other things that i'm involved in i think you know andra and darcy or steve or Dwayne <laughs> could all report out on because there are things like cca which we've been doing and um the electrification effort uh, are ongoing items so other folks can report out on those so i really don't tonight i just don't have anything i have a headache <laughs> That's my malady. We'll put tonight. that in a minute. It's okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, great. Well, should we turn it over to to ECAC member? Any ECAC member updates? Yeah, Darcy. Oh, we had said that. Um, that I would forward people the budget information about the financial indicators and et cetera. So that's in the packet. Um, we, the November 9th town council meeting covered that and um, basically went into, uh, you know, why we are going for level funding, et cetera. And the, the next step is the, um, Finance Committee come up, coming up with their guidelines. And we had talked about that the last time too. Uh, so the, the budget hearing is tomorrow. And um, yeah, if we're not going to do something on behalf of ECAC, you know, it is a really good time for individuals to, um, to make public comment about prioritizing uh, climate active action, uh, the fact that it's it was taken on as a goal by the town and that we want we n n understand about the budget situation, but that we want the town to keep the priority in mind. Um, and um, I did put, um, I was asked to come up with some kind of budget draft, which I did, uh, is, it is in the packet. Um, it's very, very drafty <laughs> because I just, I, I just put in um, items that could conceivably be it, items from the Linnaean plan and items from um, uh, other plans that were referred to us by Linnaean um, that might conceivably be in a first year capital request. So I don't know if you had a chance to look at that, but, and it has tons of holes in it for different sectors that I couldn't, I didn't have any I, ideas about a potential capital request and we may not even want to put any of those in this particular year but um you know we may want to decide well what's what is the one or two or two priorities that we would want to ask for so they're all in there um in the document that says draft draft um annual report and fy22 
funding request, which is part of the charge. So it's just like a, an outline that's full of holes. <laughs> so for us to talk about today, hopefully. But it's on the agenda, right? For later? Yeah. So is it? Not... Okay, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Um, yeah, great. Thanks, Darcy, for, for pulling that together. I um, thought maybe we should just report a little bit about the, um, the Rocky Mountain Institute building accelerator. Um, the team is going to function you know, kind of as a, just a resident team with Stephanie in on what we're doing. Um, and when we um, have a resolution for, for the town council, we'll, I think we decided we, we would want to run it by ECAC, but um, might be simpler for all if we didn't. Um, so I'd maybe think about that just strategically if ECAC wants to be in position of, you know, sort of jumping the gun on making a request. I mean, we could make it just from the resident group if we wanted. What would be the downside of ECAC um, endorsing it? Just that um, it's a uh, it, you know it, it's it's going to just be like a request of the town council to adopt a resolution, and um, we kind of are official town thing in a way that we might want to reserve our brand. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think, Steve? I, th I think there's a couple of options for ECAC. One is to endorse the effort that's done by the citizens group. Um, the citizens group would bring it to ECAC. AC, ECAC would Yep, we, we endorse that. The other would be that to work more closely with the citizens group and actually have it become something that ECAC adopts and ECAC sort of presents to town council. So that would involve a bit more work on ECAC's part. Um, and it, but it would have more of a stamp of, 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 uh, of the ECAC, I guess. Personally, I think that we've got plenty to do in ECAC in terms of putting together the, the climate action plan. So I would discourage us from trying to meddle too much into it, but perhaps an endorsement of something that is brought to the ECAC would be fairly quick and easy to do in this committee. Do we have an updated proposal to look at? We have a draft, I believe, and we were working on that last week. Uh, we have a meeting tomorrow, I believe, or Friday, Friday, I think. So we probably by the end of the day, Friday, we might have the next uh, sort of polished version ready. Yeah, so um, I just wanna thank Steve and Andra and and Stephanie for participating in these meetings. I know there's been a lot of them. Um, so thank you for taking that time. Um, maybe we can um, look to, once the draft is ready, we can add that as an agenda item for an upcoming meeting to, to talk about a little more. Um, you know, I think, and, and kind of finalize a, a strategy because I think it could go either way, but I think potentially an outcome is that it goes before the council as a resident request, and then it gets pinged back to ECAC to 
tighten it up more or something like that, you know? Um, so potentially that's the, that's one, another avenue that could, could also happen. So. Bye, John. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I suspect the town's council would want ECAC opinion on it. Um, so I thought if we endorsed it even before the citizen side brought it to town council, that might save a step. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we've done that before, right? Maybe not with a resolution per se, but with a. We, we did for the, uh, the school PV proposal that yeah, the, yeah. Sunrise brought forward, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. We do, 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 do. Um, should we report on CCA now? Sure, that'd be great. Um, I think we're close enough that we can announce the name officially. I mean, we haven't signed the documents, but it's going to be called the Valley Green Alliance. And that is an umbrella joint powers uh, agreement uh, entity that can will run the CCA um, the the aggregation you know the actual purchasing and servicing and whatever um, <clears throat> but we can also do other things uh, under that umbrella and the um, Western Mass Community Choice Energy Resident Group is um, convening to get some people involved in, in researching um, potential first project, um, particularly interested in retrofits of multifamily affordable housing. And we're going to be raising money, FYI. Because this wouldn't be something that, or even if the aggregation was already running through through the aggregation, um, but still the entity can do it. The the alliance can do it. How how raising money from what sort of sources are you be seeking? Private donations initially. We're setting up a fiscal sponsor and we're going to work through the Western Mass Community Foundation. So that's where people will write their checks to. Is there a document somewhere or a, um, you know, something that kind of describes the whole thing? Or a, is there an announcement coming or something? Or We're not that far. It will be soon though. It will be, <clears throat> we're <clears throat> voting on bylaws in the next couple of weeks and that will allow us to, um, to have our fiscal sponsor of the, not, this is not the JPE, this is the Western Mass Community Choice Energy. Right. Um, nice segue. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, um, no, I'm, 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 I'm with you on what this <laughs> is. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just trying to, figure out how to understand its relationship to the municipal governments and that kind of thing, which maybe is pending the bylaws discussion, but um, if they're, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it'll be the um, a very open resident group to support, help with education. Um, you know, what, one thing I'd like to do is, is bring some of our community leaders in on the ground floor um, you know, we are, Dwayne and I are, already started that with our renewables group, which mostly talked about CCA. So we have a couple people already initiated a little bit and potentially interested. And so I have hopes for that. But the, the um, aggregation, it, well, we're working with a lawyer 
going to get contract signed. Stephanie's doing all of this legal stuff um, to to get the um, very involved joint powers agreement um, reviewed and and or written by our our lawyer that we've we're going to work with. That's the actual intermunicipal thing. <laughs> Great. Uh, anybody else? I uh, just want to shout out Ashwin for uh, moderating a great webinar last week. Um, I wasn't able to stay for the whole thing, but I was able to listen in for, for a bit and thought it was really informative and hope that went well. Thank you. Yeah, that was really great. Um, interestingly, in the Q&A towards the end, uh, Bill McKibben, uh, name check to Amherst College as an institution that really ought to consider divesting its endowment from fossil fuels. <laughs> and <laughs> like <Matt> Amherst. <laughs> and right, 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 unlike UMass Amherst, which he uh, called enlightened by comparison. <laughs> uh, and uh, today, uh, Amherst College students, um, Amherst College Sunrise, which is now a thing that exists, uh, published an op-ed uh, calling for divestment from fossil fuels and also holdings um, that support incarceration. And they got a lot of other student groups to sign on, um, the uh, Black Student Union and uh, the Native and Indigenous Student Alliance, among a lot of other groups, co-signed. Uh, and it's getting a lot of traction. And um, a similar campaign at Amherst College did not um, find purchase in 2015. But given the circumstances, I think that this is Fairly, I, I'm I'm optimistic that this may that has that this has a good shot at, at succeeding right now. Um, so many peer institutions have already done so, and um, yeah, so that's other news from the valley around uh, climate stuff. Great, awesome, and I think um, we should just also maybe take a minute to recognize. I think our last meeting it was the day after election day, and we were all feeling pretty. I don't know what the word is. Um, <laughs> but now we have a president elect who by all intensive purposes is got the strongest climate platform um, that we've ever seen in a president um, with a strong focus on environmental justice and more importantly, a strong progressive active group of people that are gonna push them to not only do what they say they're going to do, but do even more and better. So I think um, we're in a much better place than we were even at the start of the Obama administrations um, from a climate perspective. So I think that's great. And it was kind of what we were hoping for when we wrote our climate action goals that we would have um, you know, action at the state and particularly at the federal level that would drive technology um, and funding and all of the things we need to actually be able to achieve our goals. So some positives. <laughs> um, with that, I think I'm gonna transition to talking about the outline. Um, I have pulled up here um, the outline that um, that Lauren shared, and I've added some some initial comments. Um, what I'd like to do is spend some time sort of, I think we have an opportunity today. We don't have the consultants here. Um, we can speak a little more freely. Um, we're obviously still being recorded. Um, but um, they, you know, but on the, on the flip side of that, I think that we all, a lot of us sent in comments, some of which Lauren addressed directly, some of which she didn't, and she probably has reasons why she didn't, but we can't hear from her about those reasons. So what I'd like us to do is go through the um, outline one more time 
together. I think there was also potentially a few comments that were contradictory. So I think as ECAC, we should probably go through and um, make sure we're feeling good about it. But before we do that, I also wanted to, to this, this, out, this question that Lauren posed at the top here um, really got me thinking. And I know Andrew reached out to me, you know, similarly thinking about how, this, how we would answer this question and what this report really is. Um, and so I jotted down a few, a few thoughts here because I think it's helpful to, to, to frame this um, so that we're not, so then, then the, the feedback we're giving to the outline is, is fits within the frame of the document. So, um, I'll just read this through a little bit. And then if I'm missing anything, I kind of have two questions at the end here. So I think, uh, Laura, just for yeah. clarification, is it, do we have this document or you, is this, uh, you should, uh, is this in our packet or are you sharing, showing this to us, uh, of your version? Yeah, so this is the outline, but the stuff in red is stuff that I added okay. an hour ago. So okay. I have not did not have a chance to circulate it. No, no worries. Yep. Um so just a couple things to, to for us to keep in mind about what this report, the CARP report needs to do. Um, you know, in addition to really serving as the blueprint for the actions that we need to address our climate goals and resiliency needs in a way that attends to the issues of system, systematic racism and environmental justice. Um, it's also got to um, meet the requirements of the MB, MVP grant that funded it. And it also has to serve as a document that can be referred to for additional climate adaptation and mitigation funding from the state through the MVP program um, and potentially through other other means. So, so the document will have to be a bit more detailed and longer than perhaps maybe we would we would want it to be if it wasn't serving those two goals of really abiding by the requirements of the grant and then serving as this base baseline for which more grants can be get, get, gotten. Um, it also needs, you know, we sort of embarked on the just the beginning of this process of bringing our community into a community ownership of our climate action work instead of just an engagement. And so this document will also continue to serve, just kind of serve as that jumping off point for our own work as well as other work in the town. Because I think we've already seen um, the benefits of this, of our, of our community outreach process um, or towards community ownership, I should say. And, you know, I think we want to see that happening throughout the town in a much more, um, integrated way. We're as ECAC, we're going to need to use this document for several things. One is to propose specific action and budget requests to the town council and to the town manager that help us achieve our climate action goals. Um, to, to use this as a document that's gonna help us continue working towards community ownership of our climate action work, coordinate with other town member bodies, support policy at the regional and state level, set annual goals and report on those in our annual reports. Um, so all of these things or a subset of these things may require us to take a piece from our CARP report. Like maybe there's, a, there's, a, there's gonna be a, a priority in the CARP report around CCA, for example, we may need to take that out of take that notion out of this report and put it into a document that's much more technical or use that to reference back to the document we were just talking about for the CCA work. Um, we also need, need to might want to make other smaller bite sized documents to circulate and translate about certain issues. Um, what's not part of this current work stream, but something that needs to be done and that we've recognized and we should talk about how we do this is a consistent and regular town GHG inventory that helps us track our reductions against our goals. And built into that is some level of analysis of how projects we are, we do implement are reducing GHGs from a quantitative perspective. That's not part of this report. I mean, it's mentioned as something we need to do, 
but um, I think ECAC needs to needs to think think about how we support Stephanie and the town in, in doing that because you know previously those inventories have been done because Stephanie has been able to get a free intern to do it, um, and so we probably need something either a consistent internship or a little bit more something a little bit more consistent to do that. So. I say all this because I think what we want to do as we look through this outline is that we need what we need from ECAC is for the outline of this report and then as the reports being developed, it needs to support our goals. And while everything in this document may not be relevant to ECAC, you know, there may be some things in this document that are more specific to resiliency work that we we aren't touching on in our goals or maybe more specific to the requirements of the grant. We want to be able to point back to this document for everything we do. We really want this document to be a, sec a secure uh, sort of baseline for, for all of our work. So I just wanted to, to, to tee that up um, and just double check that I'm not mixing some key goals. Yeah, Ashwin. Just a clarifying question, and this may, maybe feels like a silly point in all the process to to ask this, and we've probably already discussed it. But um, as you mentioned, having other documents, um, like bite-sized kind of pieces that might be sort of like annexes to this that are but but are separate, like about CCA, for example. Um, is there going to be some kind of like an interactive town website that people can use to navigate the plan rather than just like a PDF? <clears throat> and would that then be, could that then be the place where those bite-sized links would live? Um, I don't know if Linnaean has the capacity or the charge to create something like that, or if we have any budget to do something like that, or if we've had this conversation before and I'm forgetting about it. But it seems to me, hearing you talk, that that kind of a presentation could help to address some of the suggestions that you've made? I don't know, does anyone have thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, Stephanie, did you wanna? Just to say that um, the, um, so it's, that's beyond the scope of uh, Linnaean's budget for working um, on this current grant. So they that's not something they can or will do. Um, it's something that we will, you know, we almost had an intern last year, um, last summer uh, to work on the website. Um, I kind of, thankfully we didn't because the town is gonna be updating the entire website. So I think it's one of those things that, you know, we want to maybe engage a graduate student to work with us on developing or expanding on what we already have, uh, maybe changing the format so that it will do that. Um, so the, the, you know, the answer is it's certainly something we'd like to do. Um, I think it's important, but it's not something we currently have the funding to do or the staffing to do right now. I will say, I, I, I don't, we did have a meeting, Ashwin, where we discussed the the website and, and, and kind of went more in depth with that. And my takeaway from that meeting was concern that this committee probably doesn't have the bandwidth to manage a website. And, 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 we, and I wanted to, I was wondering when it would be time to question being ambitious with a website, the idea that the template for the website be the climate action plan seems much more feasible and, and a stronger, uh, a, good, a good way, you know, then, then we don't have a discussion about what's our website gonna look like, which we really don't have time to do. We simply, it's gonna look like the plan. I, I think that that's, uh, so I think there's some legs there if the funding ever comes through. I also um, am interested in us doing something that actually came from conversations early on that Jesse brought up, like, what do we need a 50 page plan for, <laughs> you know? And I, I agree with Laura, we do need the detail, but we also need a community um, facing document. And I see us being able to do that. Um, and yeah, if we could have a, um, web 
site that that housed um, those documents that and featured them um, or you know versions of of, of very visually popping um, kind of uh, summary plan. It would be ideal to have it integrated um, into the website. Um, but I, I think we're going to need different versions of it. We'll, we'll have some presentations. We'll have um, hopefully a, a static site and maybe, you know, some brochures and printouts about different topics. So. Yeah, I think we need to keep that. Um, I think we need to keep raising that this point of communication and um, because the web, the, the, I mean, the town, we know this, right? But the town website is not accessible, accessible to anybody. <laughs> Um, it's impossible to find most things on there. And so, um, you know, I think it's a larger question about how it, how to make our government more accessible in general, um, of which this fits into. So one other thing of the question of what's missing or what additions, one notion that I'm very happy to be voted out of this idea, but I want to put on the table is as well as including um, metrics for, you know, the, the, the benchmarking, the, the science, if there's any way for us to kind of acknowledge the gravitas of what we're doing and, and, and this sort of I think like a call to action, a uh, so cultural benchmarking of saying, this is the kind of participation we have now, this is the kind of petition we want, some inspiration, some of these more hard to measure, but potentially measurable things. And, and I was thinking about it today, looking at this, and at what point do we as a society kind of admit that we have a problem and, and and is this the right place? Like, is do we need to be more political and careful in this plan, or is there is part of this plan have some shake it up language in it? And is part of and is that an appropriate kind of goal that this plan needs to serve is to rattle some cages, make some people uncomfortable, um, and kind of. I don't know. I don't know what the end of that sentence is. I want to put that idea out there. Please outvote it if it's not appropriate. But I don't know how to not say it. And I think um, Jesse. I think this is maybe this first question about the letter from ECAC. I think that's where we have a lot of leverage to to do that. Um, so I think we should talk about that at that that point because I, I was thinking about that as well like what can we say to 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 let people know that this is we're we need to move forward in, in, a, in a much more uh, progressive and out of the box way um but before we get down to that is there any other questions or thoughts before we start going into the outline kind of with this framing in mind? Yeah, Stephanie. I just wanna um, follow up on what Jesse said. Um, I think I like the idea of you stating something in your letter at the beginning. I also do think that this whole, you know, the whole community leader involvement is gonna be, you know, the process that was gone through is going to be part of the document. And I think that there will probably be some, I anticipate <laughs> some language um, to, you know, to what specifically Jesse is referring. So I anticipate that there will be language in the document. Um, but I do think you as a body sort of introducing it right up front is um, powerful. That's just my input.
Okay, great. Um, so now I'm moving into the the outline, and I thought we could add our comments here in red, and then I'll share it share it back with. We can share it back with Lauren. Um, one of the things I, I just added here is that we, we have talked about and, and Lauren has stated that we'll do like a short, there'll be some kind of summary of this document that will be a few pages long that we can get translated that will be much more concise. Um, so I just added that at the top. And I don't know, probably not today is not the right time to focus on what the letter will specifically say, but I think we should note that that's our that our that our hope is to be, um, you know. Anyway, this is something we can work on the letter, and what the text will be. And if anybody wants to take a lead on drafting something, yes, Darcy. I just want to say that um, I really appreciated Jesse's comments about what um, the letters could look like from the town manager and then from ECAC with him. Um, really, you know, focusing on taking the lead. I don't remember exactly what Jesse said. Maybe he can say more about it, but but I do re recall really liking his comments about that. The, the basic idea was that we asked the town manager to less of a letter, more of a statement, a, a strong statement of purpose. And And I think that the tone of it is that he is committed and to something that reflects the town, but that he that it can't be done alone. Um, and and so it's an invitation to the populace to to join in this, and that our letter uh, is in support of that that statement. That was the that was, that's the gist of it. It's it I, it's written in in my feedback document. I'm wondering if. Um... Uh, well, I'd like to really um, lift up the anti-racism and racial justice and you know, uh, some of these other very general um, things that, of course, we're committed to, but it's really town-wide. You know, if we could, um, if the town manager would be willing to, you know, say, what this process was so successful at lifting up um, is something that the town wants to integrate into all areas and then allow us to say, here's how we're integrating it, you know, through environmental justice, energy democracy, uh, uh, energy justice, you know, that those are the climate related issues um, that, you know, I'm sort of jumping ahead a little, that I, I would prefer our climate plan use the relevant justice terms that describe what we're doing, how we're translating that um, commitment. But if it'd be great, <laughs> it's a great idea to see, you know, how far are we can, um, how much we could introduce at the town leader level on that too. Yeah, it would be very simple to um, to to just state that those are two top priorities of the town racial equity and um, climate action. So um, yeah, those are town manager goals. I think in terms of, um, you know, I think as we've talked about before, you know, we wanna be careful not to overpromise things we can't deliver as, as ECAC. Um, and so, so one thought would be that we 
we write our ECAC letter and then we send it to the town manager and say, this is what ECAC is gonna put in. And we would request that you, um, it sort of give him some thoughts on how he can make a strong statement of purpose related to that. Is there another entity in town that is working on racial justice and social economic um, diversity equity issues? There's the Human Rights Commission, I believe. Um, there may be others, but it seems like there ought to be <clears throat> something that's gonna work and develop principles and standards that then would feed into every town committee and every town department to, to guide their work in a different way going forward. It shouldn't be up to the ECAC to sort of set these broad standards on, on, on racial justice and that sort of thing. It should be a, a different group, I believe. I could answer that. The, the new, the new um, committee that was set up in response to Black Lives Matter concerns um, is having its first meeting tomorrow. And they are, they're, they're going to be coming back with a report about police funding priorities by the end of January. And then by the end of June, they're gonna make a recommendation about um, whether or not there should be some kind of permanent oversight or something like oversight, police oversight slash racial, racial equity type of committee. Um, so that's, a, it's a temporary committee, but it's looking at whether there should be a permanent committee. And it's a seven, uh, seven people of color, uh, or no, six people of color. And um, right now one non-person of color. Yeah, Ashwin. <clears throat> Thanks for that update, Darcy. I've been following um, the politics around the launch of that committee uh, recently. Um, and I would, I would just um, say that while well, Steve, I agree that uh, obviously racial justice is not the exclusive province of ECAC, nor are we equipped structurally and in terms of our kind of relative positionalities and individual positionalities to be dictating the ways in which Amherst does. I mean, this apology ought to be uh, moving towards racial justice and what criteria it ought to be looking to to evaluate its progress on that front. Um, I also think that it's important not to wait for the police committee, the policing oversight committee um, to set those terms because they have a, in some ways, more specific mandate. Um, and just given the pace of change uh, with respect to these issues and given the centrality of racial justice to the overall approach that this committee has taken, um, I think that actually every committee should be autonomously, proactively articulating what it is doing uh, around racial justice, even uh, before any centralized top-down uh, mandates come down. After all, those top-down mandates can be pretty easily reduced to check boxes that don't mean that much. Um, whereas I would like to think that this committee has um, operationalized some meaningful commitments to uh, expanding participation in ways that are different uh, and deserve to be talked about. So. Um, I, I hope that we can make a very strong effort uh, to represent that work and to open the door to even more uh, work in that uh, kind of direction. Yes, I, yeah, I agree with that. It doesn't, and it sounds like this, this new committee may not be exactly kind of what I was hoping that would be, a, would have a broader vision. Um, so maybe that's yet to come, but I think I see the stuff that we have in our report definitely needs to have uh, be, be seen through the racial justice lens. Um, however, as we get further down in the outline, there are some things I'm gonna suggest maybe aren't squarely under ECAC and might be better developed by some other agencies in town. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for that. Um... I think that's a good, you know, I think that's a good way to, way to think about it because I think we're, we've been, we've done, we've done, we've, we've been doing a lot 
a lot of work, not nearly enough work, but we've been doing a lot of work. And I think um, we can be seen as a, as a um, example of how you do apply the lens. It's not means we're gonna, it doesn't mean we're gonna get it right. Um, it doesn't mean we don't ha still have a, a, a committee of mostly white people. And it doesn't mean we don't have a lot of work to do, but I think, um, you know, just like I think we talk about the need, or we talked last time um, about the need for, it's not, we're not, when we talk about the need for funding for staff roles, for example, related to this work, we're not talking about the need of having a, a sustainability office off to the side, right? It needs to be integrated. And there's the same, the same is true with, with, um, racial justice issues, right? It needs to be integrated in every in every facet of the town. Um, and so th that's, I think we're, we're sort of talking about how those intersections can, I think we need to talk about how those intersections play out. Um, but if there's things here that really would be better, I, I think we also have to be realistic about what our bandwidth is. <laughs> And if there are things that would be better suited to be done by another committee for which we can provide information to and and push in the right in, in the right direction um, based, then we should do that too. So maybe there's a section of this of this report that just covers things or a, a, an annex of this report that just covers things that came up in our process that we think needs to be handled um potentially by other other folks but again this document is not not everything in this document is going to be something that ECAC needs to do um but ECAC needs to once I think everything we want to do should be somehow reflected in the, in this document through either the principles or the, the priorities I, 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 I think the nuanced language for me at least or the important language is is not we think that thing is important too. It's the success of what we're talking about and what we have specifically been charged with absolutely hinges on the success of, of racial and social justice issues. They cannot be done separately and they, they re will rely on one another. To me, that's, that's the crux of it. And that, you know, and it's, I think it's important to, to link their success together um, rather than say, oh, I, I, I believe in this, I believe in that, I believe in that. Yeah, that's a good way to, to frame it. Okay, um, so it's 5.30 and we wanna make sure we touch on the budget items in the annual report of which this will all feed into, as well as maybe talk through some of the priority for task group meetings. Although I think most of that is, is meant to be shared for Linnaean, but I think potentially at some point, maybe we should go over it together as well. Um, do folks have any specific any other specific comments about the outline that they want to raise questions that in their initial comments that they don't see addressed? Yeah, Steve. Yeah, um, I've been sort of chomping at the bit here. Um, what, what, what I find frustrating in the, in the, the, the priorities and potential part is what are listed as actions are largely goals. I see goals. I don't see actions. Actions have steps that you take from to get from where we are to where we want to be with a goal at the end of it. But thing, statements like tackle existing buildings aggressively or lead by example with municipal buildings, those are, those are goals, great goals, but they're not actions. And our plan has to have actions in them and they have to be prioritized. Um, they have to be prioritized by a balance of greenhouse reduction um, payoff kind of, kind of balanced against uh, effort. Also with the racial justice um, balancing um, mixed in with that. So I'm, I'm frustrated that we have a bunch of goals. They're great, but yeah, you know, they're, they're kind of bland. They're, they're, they're sort of very broad. 
So when are we going to get into the action steps, things that we are going to recommend that we do that we can evaluate that'll have some kind of an estimated, probably roughly estimated greenhouse gas reduction, along with steps, what can we do tomorrow? What can we do in six months? Who are we going to work with? What are the steps? What are the obstacles? We need details like that in this outline and in our report. And that's, to me, that's the hard part of this report. And yet that just kind of keeps getting bumped to a future meeting in a future time. So uh, when are we gonna work on that stuff? Translate goals into specific actions. I'll quickly say that Sarah and I had the same realization as we started sorting through the buildings groups and we, and we determined that what we had to do, we, we created a matrix for, we basically put together all of the ideas and we said, if we can't translate this into an, a concrete action, then it's off the list. And, and so we've been going through and beginning to do that. We have the idea and then we bullet below it, the three or four potential concrete actions that go with it. And then we've got a greenhouse gas reduction, resilience, equity, feasibility, kind of rating system that we're applying to it. And, and we're kind of in the middle of that and I could share it with, it, we're just neat. We've both, Sarah and I have both been kind of tied up uh, with other things and we're behind the eight ball, but once that gets, but to me, that was where we had the same realization and we thought this is our chance. Put, we should just, we just have to do it and give it and push it right back to Linane and say, organize all these ideas. <laughs> Yeah, Dwayne. Yeah, I'd just uh, say I had a, a similar um, reaction or, or thoughts as uh, Steve outlined uh, and and put forward. I did, um, you know, I'd focus obviously on the renewable one, but then also really got into the land use one as well. I don't think you can talk about solar uh, without talking about land use, um, and I didn't see that connection. I did, um, uh, it just you know did some, just in those very. Uh, specific sections did some track changes, which I just sent you, Laura, just because it's, it, I can't, I'm not going to spend the time sort of reading, reading through my edits, but um, uh, just some ideas of, of some uh, additional sections uh, to add to this, getting to sort of more the, the, uh, the idea of some more action oriented items. Um, you know, I didn't see anything here about um, actually uh, trying to, um, uh, not necessarily in, in this report, it's beyond Linnaean scope, obviously, but, you know, I suggested an action should be, let's measure um, our renewable energy supply potential. Um, uh, you know, where, 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 um, uh, where can solar go in, in Amherst? Um, um, and how are we going to, as we try to, either through the CCA or other means, how is the town going to consider the uh, use of renewable energy credits and carbon offsets in this plan um, and, and meeting our goals um, to the extent that we're not gonna generate all the energy we need within our borders um, and, um, and, and some actions and, and, and particular analysis on, on really how are we going to strategically support the thermal markets, renewable thermal and build those markets up in Massachusetts. And then in, in the, in the um, land area, um, not that it was my, my area, but um, I think we really need to think about, uh, again, beyond maybe this report, but set up some method to uh, really establish uh, priorities um, and guidelines for solar siting in the town. Um, and, um, uh, and then um, be proactive in town in some way to uh, designate solar siting opportunities to, to uh, build out and, and offer solar um, solar site, site siting opportunities for developers as opposed to waiting for developers to come in and tell us where they want to put their solar projects. Yeah, uh, Darcy and then Stephanie. Yeah, um, I just felt like uh, the, um, the, 
the title of the section, the overall title, the um, potential, uh, what was the title of it? Um, I think that, that we had given a lot of feedback that, um, that we shouldn't, uh, that we should, we should talk more about um, not yet the language of potential um, use long-term actions or whatever. Um, and I think that, that that language was changed below, um, but it wasn't changed in the title. But, um, and uh, I think you all got, uh, I don't know, about a week ago, I sent everybody the transportation uh, template. Um, I had talked to Laura about it, you know, transportation and we had such a long list of different topics in our work group, including transportation, waste, communications, um, public health, you name it, we were the grab bag. Um, but so I, I, made, um, I made like really draft plans for transportation and waste based on, um, which are in the, actually I don't think they are in the packet. Um, but they're um, they're based, you know, in part on the Linnaean plan, in part in part on all those municipalities that were referred to us by Linnaean way back many months ago. That I I had made a spreadsheet and compiled them all. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. That's the transportation plan. Um, so I tried to include the um, the the. Um, in the columns, the elements of, uh, you know, whether they should be immediate or whether they're, they're longer term and what are the co-benefits of equity, greenhouse gas reduction, resilience and savings. And then what are, what are the types of costs? Do they have capital costs? Do they have staffing costs? Um, and what are the funding opportunities that are available for them? Who would be the lead and who would be the partners? And I got all of those categories from the different climate action plans that had been referred to us. Um, so uh, this is just a very plain spreadsheet, but, and obviously it could be made into something really, you know, much more interesting. Concord has like individual blueprints for each action with, and all the sub actions that go into implementing the main actions. Um, so, Anyway, I just, uh, I think you probably all saw that and we just thought of it as a template for the general categories that we might wanna look at for each action. And I agree totally with Steve about my reaction to that language is that it wasn't action oriented. So these are all actions, if you notice, they all have action language in each one of them. So, um, yeah, I thought I was going to get to this um, in more doing, trying a more detailed <laughs> um, expansion of, uh, you know, some of Dwayne's ideas that he shared. Um, and I just didn't get to that. So I'm behind the ball, but um, so I'm hearing Jesse and Sarah um, create, have created something that might be a template and and Darcy has this um, possible template and do we want to decide what um, what form to start with um, just so that we're comparing apples to apples I mean, what do we want in the final plan? Should I know Cambridge has these spreadsheets, you know, Concord has these spreadsheets. I I was under the impression that Linnaean was going to be providing us with more specific actions. And I've sort of been waiting for that. Um, I may be mistaken, maybe it's up to us as, as you have started Darcy and, and Jesse for us to come up with specific actions, but can somebody help me 
clarify whether it's us or Lenaean that's supposed to come up with the bulk of these specific actions? Yeah, Stephanie. Um, I was just going to say that um, I think we had to get through the whole task group process first. That was kind of the, that was kind of what Lauren was waiting on was to gather all of the information. So right now she's synthesizing through all of the notes that were taken from those meetings um, and, and pulling actions from that. But I don't think it hurts as the co-chairs of the meetings. Um, I think what you're all doing is great and would be useful and helpful um, and ensure that you get information that you want to, you know, that you want to include in the report is in there. So I think, you know, I, I think it's really a combination of both. I, I do think though, Stephanie, to, to Steve's point, it would be helpful to know um, exactly what Linnaean is gonna provide in terms of, of detailing those actions and what we should be providing as task group co-chairs. Yeah. I'm writing this down. Well, thanks, Stephanie. <clears throat> yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think the way that the outline is presented, there's a variety of levels of detail that I can imagine actually being in the final product. And I definitely just don't want to lose Steve's concern here because, <clears throat> um, yeah, I, sh I share I share your concerns, Steve. That um, we need to have ac actions in here, and I was under the impression that Linnean was going to generate those, and that still may be the case. But um, what, I, I'm just curious, since since the consultants are not in this meeting, um, when might we garner some clarity about this? So I'm going to jump in here. Um, so Lauren is actually off this week which is part of the reason why they're not here tonight. Um, but I'm probably gonna meet with Jim at the end of the week and we'll um, just tell him that this is information that you all specifically want and they could come to the next meeting and address it. Um, so I can, you know, I can certainly address those concerns. I would, so yeah. I, I mean, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if we can clarify our ask just so we're crystal clear about what we're asking them for. So Steve, you said like kind of action and then something about like estimated greenhouse gas emissions reductions and other like concerns and trade-offs. But it's in that at like level of specificity around action that we might get caught up. Can any, does anyone have any ideas about how we might really lock down exactly what it is we're asking for when we say action? And let, let me just add that, um, I mean, I, I did, or bring that up and uh, that question up at the last meeting and, and Jim sort of uh, did uh, sort of suggest that that Linnean was not really, uh, it, it, his expectation was that Linnean was not doing um, sort of spreadsheet analysis and, and trying to uh, hone in on greenhouse gas savings specific for different actions and building up a wedge diagram as other climate plans have, uh, you know, have in their climate plans. Um, and so, um, um, I think that's the baseline they're working from is that, that that's not in their scope. Um, and, and, but I think it somewhat depends on what, um, degree of details we're talking about in terms of, of, uh, the, the, the types of actions that we put forward. I think part of it is to, is to sort of look at the actions and identify some next steps. So part of this is, you know, identifying things that will enable us to get grant funding to do a deeper dive on some of these things. I mean, there are things that the town should just be sort of doing in house and that I think it's moving towards like, you know, building assessments. Those are, there are things that can be done in house. It's just that we, I don't think the town in the past has necessarily had this kind of a lens or a focus. I think we have a new, um, facilities manager who has a different take on this thing on this these kinds of things and so I I think it depend you know it depends uh, you know I, I agree that I don't think they're going to do the kind of um, spreadsheet analysis as Dwayne mentioned I I do think there are going to be some tasks that they might 
be able to sort of bring forward that will be sort of like an initial first step. I think the solar sighting may be one because that's part of what, you know, uh, what I was going to comment on earlier to Dwayne's comment is, you know, hopefully the brick grant is going to be some of what you were um, mentioning as an action item, Dwayne. So that's kind of my hope. So, you know, I guess I'm saying that, you know, I, I can get clarification from them, but I think you're right in that they're not going to do like a spreadsheet analysis. And I, you know, my thought is is not is maybe uh, since they're not going to do a spreadsheet analysis, I just don't think that's in their um, scope and probably not their DNA so much either. But um, a list of what are the actions we should be we should tee up for ourselves, um, whether it's you know that the town can do it internally, or at least we have a list that we can uh, target for raising money in some way to to get uh, a, a new a, another a different consultant that, that does that type of work to, to help us whether it's through a brick grant or or um these other things that, that uh come forward uh, periodically yeah and i think one of the, the key analyses of the action is as you said you know the town can do it but some of the actions that will be required if this is to be successful will require um, massive action by private citizens and private homeowners and, and landlords and people that we have not really any jurisdiction over <laughs> per se. So I, I think, but we still say it, we still say to succeed this action and this is who is responsible for this action. And it could be pointing a finger right at me. Um, but we have to have some town based planning. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a home for anything that, that we say needs to happen. And um, you know, the, publicity campaign around it is organized by town staff or town volunteers you know that that like who's going to do it really does have to be in there who's going to lead the the implementation of it um i i i, I want to say that um i think oh, we've heard uh enough to know that we can uh, expect a, um, a list of, of hopefully detailed enough actions to really consider them actions from the task group discussions. But we need more than that. And um, we, we need to go um, much broader using both our expertise, the you know, example, um, climate action plans that that we that they supplied to us, um, and and we should just go ahead and do that. And so I we, um yeah, so I think that's a good point, Andra. And I I, I want to flag that we started this whole thing out with some detailed lists of actions. I don't think we've reviewed them all to make sure they're actions for each task group. And those were built, built on the sector plans that we had worked on. Those were built on reviewing other plans. Those were built on um, some of the original outreach. And then, we, and then we've done the, the outreach for the task groups. I think um, Lauren has an outline here that's still only, I think it's, excuse me, mislabeling actions but it's also still only looking at the actions from this most recent task group thing. So I, I don't think that necessarily that means we're not including the rest of it, but I think we need to confirm with Lene and that they're bringing all the rest of that along. I think as a group though, we have to be like a little bit more truthful with ourselves on what we can actually do. <laughs> because I think from the beginning <laughs> to now, we've been saying we were gonna do this and the only person that does it is Darcy. <laughs> So, um, well, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> so, so I think we've got to figure out a better, like, I think Darcy, you, 
your the ter transportation work is a great example. The reason why you have this spreadsheet already built is because way back when, when we were were starting to do this, you did you kind of did that work, and you've continued to build on that work. So you've already got all those actions from the beginning of the year, and I don't know if the rest the rest of us have have followed through or had the time or ability to follow through in that manner. So um, I do think there's there's a gut check for ECAC here just to figure out like what, I think we need to understand what Linnaean's planning on doing, um, recognizing it's not gonna be an Excel file with GHG reduction potentials because a lot of these are hard to even estimate that for. Um, but that, you know, we want some more, we, we want some more detail. We need detailed actions. Um, and then what, what is ECAC can we, can we reasonably do and how, to, how better to do it? Maybe the way we're organizing and doing it is not the right way to do it. So I'd be open for a discussion about that. If, you know, what we're trying to do here is not on the cutting edge. Many other communities in Massachusetts and across the states and the world have created climate action plans, some of them many years ago. So what we can do, but what I was hoping Linnaean would do would be to cull some of the most successful strategies that have worked for a town similar to Amherst and present them to us. And then we can say, yeah, this will work. Oh, this will work. Oh, this one won't work, but maybe this one will if we tune it up. That's what I was hoping for. So then at least to shorten our homework. I mean, yes, we can go to all the climate action plans that are out there and pick and, and cull from them and, and, and steal the best and adapt them to Amherst. But I was hoping that Linnaean would short circuit that with their experience having helped develop a bunch of climate action plans and have worked with other towns. What are the, those actions and other climate action plans that have actually worked that don't just sound good, but have actually worked? And what are the lessons learned and therefore we could then adopt those. Um, you're right, Laura. I think we, um, I feel like I, I could do more of that. I wish I could, I will try. But I'm, again, I'm hoping that the, the purpose of Linnaean is to bring some of that experience and expertise and provide us at least with some of that material for us then to take the next steps, in, including a spreadsheet analysis. I don't expect them to do it. Um, at least give us something to start with. Yeah, Darcy and then Stephanie. Yeah, I just, I think that um, we we kind of had this conversation at our last meeting um, and, and we did decide that we were gonna come back to this meeting with, um, you know, looking at our sector-based plans and coming up with what we thought should be the actions, partly because we wanna to put together a budget request but just generally. So um, half of us did that. <laughs> I mean, half of the, the work groups, if, if Jesse and Sarah are you know, in process and, and Laura and I did it. And um, so I don't think it's an impossibility for us to, and, and, uh, to put something together, especially if we um, look at plans from you know, if, if they already provided us the plans from these other leading communities, they're, they're, um, they're the key right there. Um, that's my thought anyway. I, I think, I think particularly if, if I really don't think it would be our responsibility to format and, and, you know, Andre, you had mentioned putting you know, coming up with a coordinated effort throughout the ECAC to present this back to Linnaean. I, I think, I think we get done as much as we can get done, and then we throw it back in their laps, and and they sort it out. But but I do think I think they would benefit from seeing our lists, and and I you know I think it's I, I think it's worth you know I, I'd like to try to finish up our list and get it to them. I but I do agree with Steve in essence of I'm still waiting to see what is being proposed like still needing something to react to um, so that we can you know I, I kind of feel like we are the client and and we haven't and and I know that 
I think the, the reality is like they're because of the doing this the right way, the kind of the outcomes, which is a very um, uh, white word, maybe is uh, is what we're all craving, and and we haven't gotten to that piece of it yet. So I I, I guess I think maybe we'll see this coming up pretty soon. Yeah, I think um, one thing that we should do as well is. Um, Anyway, sorry, go ahead, Stephanie. I, I just quickly wanted to say, and not a lot really, um, I mostly just start, want you all to talk, but I just did want to say that, you know, there's a lot of information and I really do think you need to give them some time. <laughs> you know, they just got through the task group process. This climate action plan is not the only thing they're working on. They have other clients and other projects that they're working on. So I kind of feel like a little bit, I, I think, I would really like you to trust them a little bit more and give them a little time. Lauren is doing her best to start to pull things together and she certainly is clear on some of the things you're asking for. So I just, I just wanna say that because I don't think the other information has been lost. I think she's literally just trying to include what, what happened in the task group process. So there's, there's that piece I just wanted to say. Um, and also I did wanna say that this plan was meant to be different in terms of the equity piece, you know, I don't, you know, maybe it wasn't a perfect process, but it was different in how a lot of other plans are put together in this community and in other communities. An MVP program is actually really looking at what we did as something different um, because it's not... I like what you just said, Jesse, that sort of outcome is a very white term, you know, in doing this plan in a similar way in the, in the way it's been done in other communities, there's also really a lack of voices that are included in that process and those actions and those outcomes. So I think just give them a little time to sort through this, give them a little space and a little less pressure. I think you guys have other things that you've wanted to work on that you know, you can focus on while they're, you know, trying to come up with this draft. Should we? That's just my feedback. Should we hold off on on the work on coming up with these actions because it may be redundant and, right. and yeah. that's 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 really the question. That's now. the question. Because I got I got three hours of work I could do, or wait and not do it. Well, I can. I can ask, um, just making sure I'm not muted. I can talk, I'm going to talk to Jim um, on Friday. So, you know, I can just, let me just clarify this with them. Um, you know, it may be that you're, the specific things that you're thinking about and the lens that you're looking at them through might be helpful. So, you know, I don't think that's, you know, I think it's important for you all to do that too. Like, I like that you added an equity lens to the actions. Like, I think that's, an important piece to sort of look at as part of all of the other ways you typically would analyze these actions and these strategies. So I, I don't, um, I'll check with Jim, but my personal feeling is I don't think it's a bad exercise as ta task group co-chairs to have that with one another so that you're on the same page. Yeah, I think it's just easier said than done, Stephanie. So, and I, I don't want us to, um, do work that that they're doing so i i just yeah, think we need a little bit more clarity yep um and i and i hear you and i think we're all in a time warp right now um yeah. well, and and so so I, I don't want to but but we also don't want to get to a point two months from now where we we don't have what we need so i think there's a there's a there's a balancing act there Right, so let me con con uh, for with Jim and get back to you all. But I think, um, you know, I also think that there are things that times that you all give yourselves specific homework that wasn't necessarily coming from them. It's just that you all wanted to do it a certain way and have it in your mind. So you gave yourselves that work to do, which is fine um, and would be useful to them for sure. So I don't know that they were specifically asking you all to, to do this work. So let me confer with Jim. 
So a, a way to be more specific as Ashwin was asking for is to clarify um, how much of the actions that they will be calling and, and pulling out are going to be focused on what came out of the task groups and how much is going, are they going to provide us with the kind of guidance like Steve was talking about, you know, what's worked, um, what have some of the outcomes been based on um, the model climate plans, um, you know, learn, they, they know more about that um, and, and let's, let's use best practice and are they going to do that too? And I would add, and how, and could you ask them, how are they going to organize the plan to indicate that the action, that at least some of the actions listed are going to amount to 25% emissions reductions by 2025? I, and I don't know that they're gonna to get to that, Darcy, yeah. specifically. Uh, that's what we just said earlier about the whole spreadsheet analysis. But that wasn't that a priority that we had put forward? I, I think, yeah, I, well, let me, I mean, I have talked to them about the goals that you all have identified. And, and I think I need to just confer with Jim about, about that. You know, it may be like the first step. So the 25%, but let me just confer with Jim. Wayne? Yeah, I would, um, I think it is important to have something in the report about getting 25% by 2025. Um, you know, maybe it's not a wedge diagram, but it's some sense of, you know, across the various different sectors in the town, this is where, um, and with some backup in, in their, in their uh, rec action uh, items of, of, of uh, what sectors in the town, if it's through the CCA or um, electrification, uh, energy efficiency um, programs, where, where is it reasonable to expect those reductions to come from? Uh, but then what I was also gonna add, and I'm um, trying to think this through, but um, I think it might also make sense to think about the town divided in, in, in both one municipal part of the town, which there is, we do have, we, I'm not sure about we, but we, we, we do in some way have con some control over. Um, um, albeit it's a relatively small amount of our missions, uh, but then as Steve mentioned, we don't have jurisdiction over um, the people and the businesses of the town. So, you know, I, I'd like to really see what Linnean can come up with, um, maybe calling from other action plans and experiences in other towns of not so much, you know, technical solutions that we need, you know, heat pumps, but what are the programmatic incentives? These things are expensive. I mean, business as usual, it's just not going to happen uh, by itself. Uh, so what's the promotional campaigns? What are the community actions, community organizations, um, community um, and, and potential pilots that um, we could kind of think of that we will definitely need some support to do, um, but we can take action um, in, in a pilot and attract state or um, um, stimulus funds to, um, uh, to get some money to actually pilot something new that's innovative in terms of programmatic ways of delivering this transition um, that's um, different than just waiting for it to, to, to happen because it, it, it's not going to happen very quickly uh, amongst the large majority of the, of the town that we don't have jurisdiction over unless there's um, some of these um, campaigns or outreach or stimulus activities to really get the ball moving. So I just want to jump in real quick about, um, you know, things like the CCA effort, you know, the town in of itself as you all have pointed out, we don't have control over a big piece of our pie, right? 40% 40, 40 
is the residential sector. Another big chunk is UMass. We don't have control over either, the, either of those, but your 25% references, uh, references them as well. So you're talking about collaboration with UMass, but then in the residential sector, you're talking about opportunities like CCA that are gonna be the things that will drive this forward. So, you know, I think those pieces are, again, those pieces are there. Um, I just, again, I wanna stress, we need to let them, and I can talk about the 20 to, or the 25% goal with Jim as the priority, which I have stated before. Um, and we, and you've all stated before. So I've got, you know, I've got plenty to tell them, but every time people say clarify, you're all sort of <laughs> saying clarify, and then you're giving me a huge list of things that aren't as clear. So <clears throat> go ahead, Ashwin. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I, I absolutely hear what you're saying, Stephanie, about sort of trusting the process, trusting Linan, letting them actually put this together so that we can respond to it. Um, I actually had a number of kind of laundry list things and concerns that I was going to anxiously voice. Uh, they were they were very they were very similar to what Dwayne just said, actually. But I just want to reframe this maybe, and this might help when you talk to Linan in terms of an answer to Lauren's question about the voice of this document, rather than just listing stuff, right? So. Basically, yeah, we, we do have a plan that followed a different process. We do have outcomes that are not framed necessarily in terms of how much greenhouse gas reduction we're gonna get by 2025, although we do perhaps wanna see some language around that um, so we can think about it. And we also have fundamentally a town that has massive segments of its emissions portfolio outside of the direct kind of jurisdiction of the municipality. And like in that context, what the voice of this might see, and maybe what would be helpful to see from Linnaean, um, is a call for the town to support these other sectors in moving forward, even if it is outside of their kind of legal jurisdiction. Maybe there's some, some incentives they list, maybe there's not. But once they do that, we can then come back and say, okay, now that we sort of are the town and we're putting this document out, in this document, we commit to supporting homeowners in these things. We commit to supporting business owners in these things. And I think if we frame it this way, we'll resolve some of our anxieties about it and actually make this um, the type of outward looking commitment that um, maybe we're worried that we're not gonna get. <laughs> um, and you know, part of, I think the anxiety is we're like hoping that Linnaean will tell us what, 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 what can we do but of course, there's limits to what they can actually tell us to do. So if, I, if we think about this as a starting point for the town to voice its commitment to supporting those that are, you know, people in the community, actors in the community, I think that will perhaps help resolve a lot of this. And maybe that's sort of an answer to Lauren's question. At least that's my take. I think that this is what this document should ultimately be, is a commitment from the town to support people in town. And I'll say quickly, that wasn't Lauren's question. That was a question that came to Linnaean through an interview that I did with a private citizen who saw the outline and said, what is the voice of this thing? And we put it to Linnaean. Great, okay, yeah, yeah, even even better, right? Yeah, yeah. and so it's, it's it, I really believe the ingredients are here for this to go well. Okay, well, I think that was a fruitful and helpful discussion. And I think we're all feeling anxiety about this. Um, and um, because we care about it and we want it, <laughs> we put a lot of time in it and we want it to be, to be good and it will be. Um, so I think we have a lot, we've given Stephanie a lot to take back to Jim and we need to understand a bit more before we, we move forward. So I would suggest that we switch gears a little bit and go to the items that Darcy mentioned earlier, the budget items and the annual report. And um, maybe Darcy, you can bring up that document or I can, I think it was done on the, work, the Google doc, right? Yeah, hey, hey, let me just jump in real quick. I have to leave you guys. I'm really sorry. I just want to thank everyone again. I really, at the end of every meeting, I just feel super grateful for everyone. Buried in that budget presentation is the phrase, no new initiatives. That's the only comment I'll give about that long PowerPoint. Someone stuck in the line. There shouldn't be any new initiatives. That's all I'm going to say. Have a great night. Stay warm, everyone. Thank you. Hi, Jesse.
All right, let me see if I can find um, oh, sorry, I'm having some screen sharing issues here. Just FYI, that, that's a comment that I made to Kathy about uh, the budget guidelines that um, there, there is a section in the guidelines. There's some good language from last year that, that we asked to, to just to continue for this year. And, um, and um, one of the things that they said was that there, that, that, that climate action is, is um, a new initiative that's an unmet budget need. Um, and so I suggested that we, that we, we leave open the option of just being able to reorganize our priorities. Okay, um, Darcy or Andra, do you want to to speak to this? Um, I could just say that I I set it up as if it were I I based it on last year's re, uh, annual report and budget requests. So I just sort of um, inserted the pieces of last year's budget request into this one. And then, as I said, I added, added items that um, either were in Linnaeans that might conceivably be a capital request or um, things that, that appeared in my two plans that I had that appeared, that seemed to have um, a sh you know a short term you know a, a near term capital request possibility, and not that we would necessarily want to put all those things in a request because obviously we're trying to appear reasonable <laughs> this year, um, but uh, yeah. So uh, just started with some and Andrew, you might want to you. If you want to narrate this, that's fine. I, I think there's some thought that you're going to organize this process. Um, yeah, just so people know, I did um, volunteer uh, as um, at, at the request of our chair um, to you know be be the point person on the annual report. I didn't realize that Darcy had already half written it, so makes it a lot easier. <laughs> but as you can see, I left a gap. So, you know, we might want to delegate um, different pieces of it. Um, you can see how, how it just says it start with something about COVID-19 and level funding. I, I, I didn't actually write anything. And I think this could be a good um, opportunity to maybe start thinking about some of the language like we were talking about with the letter for the climate action report. I think we could put some of that in here. Um, and I think, you know, we talked last time about, you know, there's sort of a fundament, I think there's, there's my thought, this is not my ECAC hat, but my thought generally is that there's a fundamental need for us to rethink how we do funding in general because we're not necessarily we have a budget that we've had forever and we just incrementally tweet mess with the budget when we have these big goals of racial equality and climate action and all of these other things we want to do as a town and those two things don't go together and so i think there's this larger need to not only change how we look at the budgeting but also like how are we making sure that we're going to activate and be ready to take advantage of the funding that's going to be coming down the pipeline for climate and and job creation and all of this stuff right like let's assume that's happening like how are we preparing ourselves to be ready for it um i feel like that's a message that we could could give in the frame of of, of climate and action but it's also broader
So these are the five bullets of the things that are in our charge of what we need to report on um, annually. And some of it, um, uh, you know, we may not have much to report on because of the fact that we're still in process. Um, anyway, all kind of self-explanatory here. I don't know whether we want to list the things that the town has accomplished in the last year because they're not actually ECAC um, accomplishments, that, but they, we might want to mention them anyway. Okay, I think that I'm just, we could commend our sustainability yeah. coordinator for her work and, and other departments that have done things. I did want to just jump in and say too that yes, I, um, and I've said this all along, we are a team. <laughs> this is a collaboration and that I I really would like us to stop sort of identify, it feels very us and them to me. And I have to say that doesn't really feel good because I feel like the work that I do supports the work that you do, the work that you do supports the work that I do. And I would like us to think of those things together. And if there are things that get accomplished that are all for this ultimate goal, I think we should definitely um, applaud and support them no matter who does them. That's just sort of my take. Yeah, I just, yeah, I was just looking at the specific language that it said, um, measures taken to, well, yeah, so I, I, I guess I'd assumed it meant measures ECAC had taken, but yes, agreed. You are part of ECAC, Stephanie. <laughs> well, I think, um, I mean, I would flip that another way, Stephanie. You know, I think that you do an incredible amount of work and, you know, we're, I think we need to frame this as this is all of the things we can we've been able to accomplish because Stephanie is so proactive and hardworking and she's getting stuff done right like this is this I think this is an opportunity to flag that as well as flag the need for even more support around around this work because that's going to need to be a big part of the climate action plan. I, kn I know we're being recorded right now, but um, my personal opinion, speaking as a private citizen, is that we should fire cops and hire more people like Stephanie, right? And to the extent <laughs> that this document can advance that objective, I think we should make that a thing, you know? <laughs> um, and Stephanie, you um, probably could list quite a few more on here that this was just off the top of my head. So I, I'm sure that you know of more stuff to add to the list. Yeah, I can take a look. I think it's fine that we uh, list steps that have been taken within the town that are progress towards our goal. And certainly doesn't don't imply that ECAC has been the, the reason these steps have been taken or takes credit for it. Um, and along those lines, we may also ask for reports from the two colleges and the university, what steps have they taken? Because all the steps, even though ECAC hasn't had anything to do with those, they are still things that lead us towards our goal. And I think that's important to include in this kind of a document. Well, that is something that I will definitely need help with. Yes, I think I could give you a report for Hampshire College um, and there would be others. Dwayne might know who we could check in with for a quick report from UMass. And either, that would be me. And Ashwin <laughs> would, uh, you might have a contact at Amherst College that could provide a, something short. It might be a bullet list with a few things, but I think it would be good to document all of those efforts, even everything. doesn't matter if it's ECAC initiated or driven or not. I think we can be frank though, um, with all the work that Stephanie has done, there's not enough Stephanie, <laughs> there's not enough Stephanie. <laughs> and and the, the, the stark reality is that we are, we're, we're not close to going at the pace we need. 
uh, to get to to our goals, um, and and also to get it out to you know beyond the institutions, beyond the municipal government, um, uh, and into the into a, a, a whole community based effort, um, and um, and that's I think where the action plan, the um, carbon plan, uh, is really going to be uh, you know the document that's going to help us lead be prepared and to lead that effort. I, I, I wasn't kidding. We have dozens of cops and one person who's supposed to decarbonize Amherst <laughs> and like handle all of the new money and resource coming from the state and hopefully federal governments in the pipeline. That's absurd. And we need to name, we should name that like. Yeah, I would just say that as I was um, making that spreadsheet on transportation and waste, um, I, I definitely had some revelations about how this would all work. And the biggest revelation was that most of these things, like we said, they don't actually require capital costs. They just require staffing. And they, they and there's many, many of them. If we listed all the different things, you know, uh, I can't even, I you know, I just started feeling sorrier and sorrier for Stephanie <laughs> as I wrote all of this staff, 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 staff. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I don't see any way around, um, you know, like elevating Stephanie to a director position and adding like a, another coordinator or what, it, however it would work. But um, we, we needed, I, it was immediate. It was apparent to me that we need a, a department level, or preferably an above department level position, um, like an assistant town manager position that would be above the departments, um, to handle all of this uh, because it's multi departmental, and many, many, many actions within. Each one so uh just just saying and th that that's under the operating budget part of this which we haven't gotten to but that's uh, you know like i just um yeah I, I, I just wanted to say that you know um portland maine has a sustainability department and that's one of the few to be honest in the whole network that I work with, they're one of the few. I think Providence, Rhode Island might actually as well have a little bit of staffing beyond just the sustainability director. So um, just as, you know, that's one example that could be referenced. Right, so yeah, I just put in, and we, we had had that in our annual report budget request last, the last one we put in. Um, which was, I forget when, January, I guess. Um, and so we didn't ask for the department level position, but we, I, actually we did, we mentioned it in, a, in the narrative that we thought that that's what we would probably want in the future and an energy specialist position um, that would actually save money rather than hiring consultants to do all the, um, the solar siting and et cetera, if we were, doing a lot more solar work and somebody to do greenhouse gas inventory every every time we need one. Um, somehow, you know, we, we need to figure out how that's gonna be done because that's in our charge. And maybe it's gonna be done by a graduate student each time, maybe, um, but maybe not. I just want to say that I don't think there's anything wrong with having um, fellows and graduate students do some of the work. Um, first of all, it gives them great practical experience. I think it's really important, a great um, educational opportunity for students. But also, um, you know, I look to someplace like Northampton, that's always Dwayne Fiden, uh, I'm sorry, Wayne Fiden is always um, utilizing students for a lot of the work that he does and they get a lot done. Um, what I would like to see is more budget to bring on graduate students to do work. We don't have the funding to support fellows. We have no zero budget for that. So, you know, I would love it if I could bring in um, more fellows. The only reason we even got um, Taylor through the UNH Sustainability Institute was because they actually provided one of our two fellows for free. 
So they gave us a pass. So DPW paid for their fellow, but we got our climate fellow for free. So I would, you know, I think that's definitely a budget request that should be in there. Are we going to meet again as a committee before this um, annual report goes to the town? Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So we don't, I mean, we don't have a, our goal was to get it to them by the end of the year. Um, so I think we have at least one or two meetings in, in December, um, but that's a self-imposed deadline that we should still try to keep, but. I'll try to um, work up a, a more complete draft and circulate it so that um, people could have input and then maybe at our next meeting we could make some decisions about actual, actually, what are we going to ask for, seriously ask for, for this coming year. And if you look at the capital requests above, they, they're they by sector. So, and a lot of the sectors are just blank. Um, so if you have ideas about those things for capital requests, um, you know, I included for routine capital requests, I included the same language we had last year, which is just to, um, you know, consider the emissions impact of the capital requests that they're, they're considering with about vehicles, buildings, HVAC systems, energy efficiency, retrofits, roofing, paving, et cetera. Um, and, uh, then we have a few things under buildings. Um, are you are you doing that, Andra, or is Laura? Can you scroll down a little bit? Yeah. Um, so yeah, buildings. Um, I'm not completely sure that incentives come under the capital budget, um, but like Dwayne was saying earlier, a lot of a lot of what we are going to be thinking about is different incentives for landlords and businesses and residents to retrofit existing buildings. Um, and so on. Okay. Stephanie, do you have any idea about that? Is that a program to have an incentive or is that a um, because it has to do with, well, it doesn't have to do with municipal buildings. So, yeah. I can find, probably find that out from the um, finance director and just ask him the question. Yeah, and again, I was going to say that's, you know, to me, an incentive, like, for those types of things are directly related to the CCA effort. And I yeah. don't know how you get them in now. You know, that effort is moving along and that's to me the likely place where those will come from. From the joint power, powers entity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would, that will be like five, five years down the road or something, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's gonna come from the town any faster, quite honestly, <laughs> not <laughs> this year or next year. Sorry, uh -huh. Laura, what? I mean, but this is a place where there could, you know, is is the federal government gonna start rolling out some of these things and how do we make sure our landlords are taking advantage of them? Um, I think is maybe the question that we could ask. Um, and that's so, programming. Yeah, so I'm looking at the time and we've got one minute. So I think um, this is a great start. Thank you, Darcy, for pulling this together. Thank you, Andra, for taking the lead on, on drafting it up. Um, we'll, Note this as an agenda item for next time. Um, and if you can send anything advance, in advance that can be in the packet, that would be great. Um, and we'll also look to get um, an update from Stephanie or Jim, or maybe even an email from Stephanie. And if it, it makes sense that, you know, if Jim has clear action items that we should be working on before the uh, next meeting to let us know. Yeah, well, I'll follow up with him and we'll, I'll let him, we'll talk through how that's best how that should best be communicated. Okay. Um, is there any public that joined? No. 
No. Okay. Um, well, with that, I think we should end the meeting. Um, thank you, Joanne, for taking the notes. I hope everybody has a safe week next week. Um, and we'll talk again soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Be well, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Yep.